Okay, it is Mosin Nagant time. Uh, the Mosin Nagant, it's kind of a rifle that has changed recently. And I think it's kind of funny. The Mosin Nagant, I, I, I still remember not too long ago when you can go buy one for like 70 bucks, 60 bucks. And there was tons of them out there. And because of that, there was this big influx of modifications. And there was some cool ones. There was some not so cool ones. There was a lot of China stuff that came out that just were kind of subpar. And it made these guns look really funky. But hey, there were so many of them out there, people really didn't care. So uh, everybody went at it. Well, that's kind of different now. These things are, you know, at the low end, like 250 bucks. Granted, I haven't looked up the uh, Type 53s from China. I don't know if they're still really inexpensive. If they are, that'd be kind of cool. Maybe I'll go get one. But uh, for your standard rifles at the low end, it's like 250 bucks, uh, upwards of three, four hundred dollars, and I'm seeing on Gunbroker where the Model 38s like this carbine you have right here in front of the camera, this guy's trying to sell it for 600, 700 bucks. And I'm just like, wow, it's kind of a different world for these things. So I wanted to kind of talk about customizing and upgrading and how you just kind of want to focus on the basics and kind of avoid that bug. Uh, the Mose and the Gaunt is kind of a misunderstood rifle. And I, I think it was because of the quality of a lot of the Mosin Nagant stocks that came into the US. Uh, for the most part, they were pretty rough rifles. And, you know, a lot of them were counterboard because their, their bore was just, you know, corroded out and all this stuff. And the, the accuracy, some were accurate, some were just horrible. And it just depended on the gun. And, uh, you know, because of that, it kind of got this, this mystique. It's just, you know, the garbage rod, the gun that just wasn't accurate. It was sticky. It didn't cycle well. And honestly, it's not true. Uh, if you, if you can grab a good Mosin and you clean up all the Cosmoline, uh, including all the Cosmoline in the internals, you oil it, you do what you need to do to it. Uh, the dang thing runs smooth. This, uh, M38 that you see right here, I'll gladly take it to range and go toe to toe with any guy with a Mauser or a Springfield or an Enfield. Uh, that's how confident I am in this thing. The action is just like butter on this thing. I was so surprised when I started finding some good Mosins and I started getting out there and shooting. I'm like, holy crap, these things are smooth as heck. You know, and it kind of flew in the face of what everybody said. How like, yeah, they just suck. They're sticky. And, and some of them are. Some of them are. Uh, I've had a few that were. But uh, if you find the good ones with good bores, very smooth, very accurate. In fact, you can look back through my YouTube channel. I have a video I did a while ago, a few years ago. Uh, I was a shooting an M44 that I had. Uh, that's a Mosin carbine. Same as this, except it's rocking a side-folding bayonet. Um, I was shooting that uh, from, if I remember right, from kneeling position at 895-yard steel target. And I connected both times. And the reason I shot twice on the video was just to show a little bit of consistency. Because anybody can run a video camera and then shoot 40, 50 rounds at a target, eventually hit one, and then cut the video down and say, hey, look, I hit a 895-yard uh, target. Therefore, it's now accurate. Well, I wanted to do a couple shots in a row to kind of show a little bit of consistency um, without burning up too much video time. And I didn't have a whole lot of ammo left when I decided to do that. So... Um, that's what I did. So, and that was with the bayonet folded and all that good stuff. The dang rifles, I guess the point of all this is the dang rifles are accurate and they're smooth. So, if you want to customize these things, instead of going with all kinds of weird cosmetic stuff, focus on the internals first. You can look at replacing the springs. Uh, if there's any type of internal, if the interrupter's messed up, if there's anything in there that's, that's messed up, replace that first. Focus your energy to that. Because you'll realize once you get that done and you have this beautiful, smooth, fast Mosin the Gaunt uh, that you're out shooting and that thing is just lightning fast, you'll find you have a lot more pleasure out of shooting that thing versus a still kind of gunked up Mosin that's kind of working. But instead of in a wooden stock, now it's in some weird Archangel stock. You know what I mean? You're still not going to get a good satisfaction out of that. So focus on making sure the Eternals are good. Um... And making sure it's really clean. Make sure you get in there and get your elbow grease going. Uh, get all that Cosmoline out of there. And then you can kind of appreciate the gun a little bit more. Uh, along with that, uh, any type of firearm that has a fixed magazine, whether it's a tube magazine, rotary, I don't care. 
um, fixed box mag. I don't care what kind of magazine. But if it's fixed, what I like to have is an ammo supply on the gun somehow. And I like to do that with the Mosins too. There it is right there. This is from Strike Hard Industries. I've had this one for quite a while. And there's another one I have on my M9130. And they're great ammo pouch carriers. And they're not permanent to the gun. See here, I have some stripper clips right here. These are the cheap stripper clips. Uh, I suggest if you're going to go stripper clips, try and get the actual ones from that time era. From World War II, they're a lot better. Those are the Chinese junk clips. I mean, the ones I have that I still have and use, they, they kind of work decent, but you kind of have to go through them and find the ones that work. Um, but anyway, this one right here, it's just kind of held in place. You use the bolt from your rear plate here. And then there's kind of a bungee here. It just kind of holds it in place so it doesn't slide around. You can also use the nylon sleeves. But it's something good to put on the gun to add extra rounds, but it's not a permanent modification. It doesn't do anything to the gun. So if you're worried about value now that Mosins are worth a little bit more, um, you know, there you go. You can kind of go that route. And then if you choose to sell it or you choose to take it off and kind of turn it into a wall hanger or, uh, you know, something you want to keep original to the era, then you can do so. So that's kind of it that's as far as i'll go with a mosin and that's kind of what i suggest um some people before you go crazy if you still want to if you're still in the mosin game and you want to outfit these things just kind of keep it simple at first and i say the same thing with ar-15s uh if you have an ar-15 keep it simple get out there shoot it learn it love it all that good stuff and then you can go from there and customize it if you want in the end remember this is just my opinion uh your money is your money and you worked hard for it and you should be able to do to spend it as you see fit. So if you need to go out and put all kinds of stuff on your Mosin and that's what makes you happy, then go to it. This is just my unsolicited opinion. So uh, with that said, I'll stop yakking. Feel free to tell me what you guys and gals think. Um, I still really like these guns and I was just kind of surprised after researching it how expensive these damn things are nowadays. It kind of makes you look at the Mosin gun a little bit different now. It's not just the cheap gun that you can buy, you know, a crate uh, full of and go out and have fun. Uh, which, I, you know, it kind of goes on with the same thing that happened with SKSs. Uh, SKSs, way back in the day, they were super cheap as well. And now that's not the case. you got to pay a lot of money for an SKS. So, uh, with that said, feel free to leave your comments, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And just as a kind of a side note, my YouTube was kind of on the back burner for a while and it was on purpose. I was laying low a little bit because of all the uh, anti-gun stuff going on YouTube and there were gun channels getting nuked pretty much. So I kind of laid off a little bit and as a result of that, my viewership went down, which is expected. If I'm not putting out videos, then you know the people just aren't there. But uh, now that it seems to have subsided a little bit, uh, I'm kind of testing the waters and I'm going to get back into it. And we'll see if I can, uh, if I can uh, get back up and uh, get back to where I used to be, putting out all kinds of neat content for you guys to talk and either make fun of or learn from or all that good stuff. So uh, bear with me. Check out all my videos. If you haven't been watching them, feel free to flip through them, watch them, all that good stuff. And as always, most importantly, stay safe out there.